And then we have the fugue that goes along with that. And this fugue is a uh, textbook uh, counter subject oriented fugue. So that's why you can see all the greens and reds and um, yellows that come together. I apologize uh, for these colors, by the way. They're not chosen to mean anything psychologically. And it's, it's not really a, a Christmas fugue. Um, but I picked those colors because I thought they'd be easy for you to see as, uh, as you trace your way through the piece. And um, what you have is a subject. Again, let's look at the what makes this subject so intriguing. <laughs> rhythm gets turned back on itself at this point where the um, fast notes come on the beat instead of moving towards the beat. It's given a little extra push because of the uh, intensity of that very flat note in the key of C minor. I was going to go, oh, I forget about that. But if you think about your circle of fifths in the key of C minor, or spectrum of fifths I mean to say, <laughs> the, uh, the, the flattest note is A flat. So that note has particular uh, significance in this key. So that subject, and also it's interesting, I mean, it's almost a sequence, but not quite. Everything about it has a, some sense you can recognize a pattern, but the pattern is just slightly uh, skewed. So then we have the, the red material, which is the counter subject. And what's interesting about this is all the flourish of the counter subject comes uh, just as the subject is beginning. The answer, if you want to use correct terminology there. Um, so that we have the scale that kicks off the counter subject. After that, it's, it's really kind of a polite walking eighth note pattern. So those are, are the first two strands of material. Then we have this uh, third strand of material, which is in yellow here, which seems uh, almost even more innocuous than the uh, final part of the counter subject, because it's just it's just eighth notes. But uh, we're here finding the first example of my favorite thing, which is a rest. And there's something going on here that this counter subject has a hole in it. The second kind of subject it goes ba 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 da 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 da, and the first time we hear it, I don't think you've even recognized it. Unless you're singing or playing the alto part, you're not going to notice that. And pretty much the same is true in this case. We have the green on top, the red on the bottom, and the yellow still in the middle. And in the middle, we can't really appreciate that rest very much. Sorry. Anyway, so that, that little rest happens there. But, and this is what I think is the real genius of the way Bach has used this material in this piece, um, is that it appears from this point on only in the bass or the soprano. And because of that, it's... Um, sticks out, it means something different. When we have bum, 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 here. Do you hear that rest? It's, it's reggae. So that's the idea. It, something happens that makes that particular moment more and more impressive as the piece progresses. I, I'm running out of tape, right? Yeah, you know, we have to change. Uh, I wonder if you get a tape. This will take about uh, 30 seconds. I can play more reggae while we're <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let me play um, this, this fugue for you while Jeremy's changing the tape, and then we can talk about how these things. But notice, notice how you're hearing those three strands of materials at these points. Thank you. 
the ending is just phenomenal, how just everything thins out. That's, that's an example of how less is certainly more. Just over that bare pedal tone, the soprano by herself, with just the simplest kind of cording, comping underneath to, to give us that last little glimmer of, of the subject. So there's one other thing. One, one other thing I want to say about these uh, counter subjects and subjects that are put together. The um, last time we hear it, the subject is in the bass, and Bach does something very interesting. Another sort of subterfugal thing is that he begins the uh, soprano with the first counter subject that we heard, the red material. But knowing that by this time the yellow has become so interesting. He then transfers from the red to the yellow and puts the rest of the red in the alto and allows the top voice, the one that the ear is most able to respond to, to have that wonderful uh, missing moment, the eighth rest, which gives that uh, yellow material its, its kick. <laughs> 